My name's Anthony Allen, you're tuning to my YouTube channel, Anthony Allen Edits, the YouTube channel that is all about your video editing, hints, tips, tricks and tutorials to help you tell your stories through video with ease. And here in this video, we're going to be talking about a plugin which is available at Pixel Film Studios. I've already purchased it and that's the reason why I can provide you with some more context on this plugin before you make the purchase or so that we can have a discussion about the plugin if you've made the purchase or want to make the purchase or don't want to make the purchase. We want to find this all out. So what we're going to do here in this video is I'm going to be sharing my screen with you so you can see the plugin in action. Let's get into it. So the plugin available at Pixelfilm Studios that we will be talking about here in this video is the Auto Tracker. Now there are two different versions of Auto Tracker, so I will be showing on screen which one that I'm talking about here, just so we don't get that confused. There's a perspective one, I think, and there is one that actually uh, pinpoints things within the shot. The perspective, basically, just, you know, different perspective and angles of the shot. It's all going to go over your head, especially if you're a beginner. So basically, I'm just going to give the thumbnail of the plugin that I'm talking about on screen right now or actually share my screen so you can see the plugin on the screen on the website so you know exactly what we're talking about because I've already purchased it I know what I'm talking about you guys need to know this is the one that I'm talking about and what this plugin allows you to do this plugin actually pinpoints various things within your scene or a specific thing that you target within your scene it targets the movement so that you can follow it along with text or an image. A good visual example of this in action is shown within one of the videos that I created for a client who goes by the name of Andrew Chi Osborne. He's a martial artist, a Hall of Fame martial artist, and as you can see here in the video that I created for him, the first video I created for him, you can see there is text following him as he is doing a push-up challenge. That is basically auto-tracking in action. And the thing that I've targeted to make that work is his face. And what that basically does from there is it basically allows the text to follow Andrew's movement. And that is basically the function of this plugin. But we're gonna show you how this works on screen right now and if it's any good it should be really easy to use and we shouldn't have any issues so without further ado let's get into it okay so here we are inside of Final Cut Pro 10 I've already launched the project and as you can see from my panel here to the left I've already had a search for the auto tracking tool that we're going to use that is available at Pixar Film Studios now there are a few different types of auto tracking plugging uh, tools that are given to you when you make the purchase on the package that I've shown you on the website but for the demonstration of this video and the purpose for this video I'm actually just going to focus on just the one auto tracking which is basically what I've already shown you in the um, Andrew Chi Osborne video the one where the title is following the movement of a subject or object so that's what we're going to do here I'm going to show you how this works and then we're going to judge it at the end of the video so as you can see here we have our video I'm just going to play this for you a couple of seconds so you can see what it is and what we're going to be tracking <laughs> So I've chosen some stock footage that basically has a slow motion on the shot, basically allowing it to be a lot easier to track. And we're doing this so that we can see if the plugin has any issues when tracking even the slowest of movements. Uh, so one thing and one technique you can do when tracking a subject is you can have it slow down, track it, and then put it back to a normal speed afterwards so I'm about to show you how to do that by basically tracking it using the plugin and then speeding it up later on um, so we're gonna do this right now so here in the title plugin for the Apple for the plugin that we're looking at you can see that there are various different types of auto tracking available the one that we're gonna focus on is an auto tracking title that isn't 3d um, so as you can see we've got a 3D version here, a 3D version here, it's 3D text it's focusing on and then you've got just the average text here. Now it has to be the same uh, format as your clip in the shot so that it can be tracked using that, that version uh, basically. So if it's HD you need to track it with the HD text um, and as we can see here the shot that we've got, well I already know it's actually HD. 
um, like most of your shots will be HD and not in, in something like 4K as you can see there's a 4K version here so I'm going to drag this 4K title auto tracking to the timeline and then I'm going to stretch it along our whole entire clip there we go so it's now been stretched along the whole entire clip now nothing has come up on screen just yet well there we go I've just clicked it so now you can see there are on screen controls this basically uh, wants you to track or highlight the thing that you want to track the movement of so what I'm going to do here uh, for the purpose of this demonstration is I'm just going to drag this over the face of our, our person here from the stock footage there are different ways you can actually select your subject for example there's a, a tool that you can basically sort of mask in a selection by stretching the points over the thing that you're tracking so that you can make a, a specific shape so it can track that shape of the object that you're trying to track you have a square which is basically the same sort of thing that we've got here and then you've got this uh, button here which is which is basically what we're on which is the average um, the normal uh, default selection tool so what we're going to do is I'm going to drag this over the face because you can highlight the box I'm going to drag it over the face of our subject making sure that that is what is being highlighted and it is as you can see the four points meet around the head of the subject and then we're going to go to the on the uh, inspector tool so with the title selected we move over to the inspector so one thing I love to do is I get it to draw the track data so I can see basically what it's doing uh, when it's tracking our subject from start to finish so I'm going to highlight this and then I'm going to say draw all track data so I like it to draw all of the track data so that I can keep an eye on the uh, tracking tool when it's doing its job you can actually use a search size so basically what this does is it searches the different size and shape of the um, uh, of the subject so if the subject that you're trying to track changes its size throughout the clip which as slightly does you just want to scroll this up and because it has no definition as to <laughs> what the number means I just go for a number like 29 because that seems to work for me uh, you can track the scale so basically when you're tracking the scale or, or the rotation of your subject the text will change scale and rotation to match the subject I don't want to do this the reason why I don't want to do this at this point is because I don't want the title to rotate off in a direction or to change its size so I'm not going to check either of these uh, after this you have the uh, the text controls which we're going to mess with in a minute and you have a track forward and track reverse so if we were to start at the the back end of the clip here this is uh, move it one frame so you can see you can see that the uh, the tracking tool is not in the right place so if you were to track backwards from here it wouldn't track the subject that we have selected so I just made that mistake on screen and you're about to see how this isn't going to be in the right place when I go to the first frame so let's go to the first frame of our clip and as you can see it is not actually ready to track the face of our subject which is what we want to track here so I'm going to now move the selection tool oops I'm just going to press Control and Z to just bring that back to where it was didn't work okay there we go that's better so I'm going to move it all the way to the uh, start frame and then I'm actually going to move this tool over the face or head of the subject that we want to track now we're at the first frame of the clip so what you want to do is you want to track forward from here so what at this point you just select the track forward tool and it should it should track our subject from start to finish and and uh, we'll be able to enter some text that follows the head of our, our subject within this stock footage so let's have a go let's click track forward and see if this application works first time if this plugin works first time ready so you can see that it is tracking frame by frame and one thing that you can do with this plugin is you can actually move this window out of the way so you can see what's happening and you can see if it's actually moving along with the subject so it took quite a long time for this plugin to finish the work so I very much do hope that there are no mistakes so in order to find out if there's any mistakes first we need to make sure that the text is visible so that we can see that the text moves alongside the object or person that we're trying to track so the text here literally says text here but the scale of this text is so microscopic that you need to change the scale it's always set to zero 
So now when I change this, you should begin to see the text appearing. Now, let's see if the tracking worked because I don't want to go back and change anything as it takes a very, very long time to track the movement. And as you can see here, all of these green dots are the keyframes of the uh, tracking data. So let's play the clip to see if the tracking has been a success. Now, as you can see, there was a slight jump in movement there where there was a slight change in the way that it tracked. You saw it at the uh, three quarters of the way into the clip that the text moved over the top of our subject. Um, so it wasn't 100% a success. And near the end of the clip, it completely went down into the body of the subject. So now we're going to get rid of all the draw and track data on top of the image. We're going to leave the guide on top of the clip for now. You can then change this text by doing your normal text inspector and changing this to whatever you like. Different fonts, different colors and so forth. Going into your 2D styles as it is a 2D version of the plugin that we've used. This does change the size, which is a pain. Changing the overall size again, meaning that the whole thing needs to be rendered all over again. So what we're going to do is we're just going to undo that change because I can't be bothered to wait for it to completely render all over again. Then we're actually going to make a compound clip because I said at the start of this that we were going to see if we could speed things up in post as the shot, the clip was a slow motion clip. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to find where the slow-mo begins, which is about here. Make a cut after we've made the compound clip. Now we're going to modify and retime. Let's go into fast two times. Now let's have a look. I'm going to also turn down the sound because I'm, I'm not really liking the sound of that when we're playing that through. Might be quite might be quite annoying to you viewers as well. Now I'm going to speed this up even more just to see if the tracking follows suit. And a bit more. And I would say, other than the actual change in tracking that happens three quarters of the way into the clip, that this has been a success. Although there is a bit of a hiccup with the plugin that we can see so far, it still does save you a lot of time in terms of tracking. So, because the plugin takes so long to take effect and to track your subject, one thing that I would advise is actually trying to focus on the selection more than what's happening when the plugin is working its magic, as this will help you uh, not have certain hiccups like, for example, this moment here, where the text completely jumps into the wrong area. So there we have it guys, that is the auto tracker that is available at Pixar Film Studios. Now, I know a lot of the Final Cut Pro X community do not have a high opinion of Pixar Film Studios, but I want to hear your opinions here on this video. I want to see what you think of this specific plugin. Not the, web, not the website and the company, but this specific plugin available at Pixar Film Studios. What do you think about it? What do you rate it? Do you think it's worth buying? Do you think it's a load of garbage? I want to know what you think of this plugin. If this video has provided you with some value or a talking point that is valuable to you and provides value to the community or yourself, then please give me a thumbs up here on this video. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell not to miss a single video so that you don't miss out on the discussions that we have here about tools like this. 
And don't forget guys that I also give away free knowledge and other free things here on my YouTube channel that you do not want to miss as it will help you with either your workflow or learning how to use editing platforms such as Final Cut Pro 10. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one here on Anthony Allen Edits. Peace.